Hello there, friends and RC family. My name is Alec from High Noon Hobbies, and this time on the channel, we're taking a look at what it looks like when a course turns into a dumpster fire for both a great driver and for me. If you're new to the channel, I very much appreciate you checking it out. I hope you will stick around, watch at least this video, see if this content seems worth your while, and consider subscribing so that then you can enter the 3K subscriber giveaway. You actually don't need to be subscribed technically to enter this giveaway, but I would really appreciate it if you did. This is the second giveaway for the channel. We're going to be giving away one of these beautiful High Noon Hobby RC sling packs that Sons of Crawl and I have been working on for the past little while. Uh, we are we're really proud of this bag and we are continuing to create or we are continuing to work on new innovations for it so definitely keep your eyes peeled for that but if you want to be part of the fun and get one of the early early editions of this bag go ahead and go to highnoonhobby.com forward slash 3k giveaway and enter before june 9th at 1159 p.m mountain standard time and you can have a chance to win your own High Noon Hobby Sling Pack. It's great for RC, it's great for other stuff. If you're not looking for an RC bag, it's great for whatever you want, but go ahead and get over there and enter yourself. We are out here, though, at the beautiful Chimney Rock near Little Moab, Utah, just west of Utah Lake, and this is the course that we're going to be taking a look at today. This is the upper course, or course number two, for the Class 2 segment of of the third Northern qualifying round of the North versus South Utah RC Crawling Championship 2023. Boy, that is a mouthful, but isn't it so much fun? Now this course here, if you can't tell, is it's a bit of a doozy. Um, it is set up here through a bit of a boulder field, which any of you who compete in, comp in RC crawling competitions, you probably know that boulder fields are some of the hardest terrain to deal with. Not only because the gates can be just absolutely, uh, Logan, you'll like this, disgustingly difficult, but also because it just provides all sorts of obstacles besides the gates themselves. Having so many boulders to try to dodge, you really have to think through your line choice, whether or not you're going through a gate. And time will play into the uh, the difficulty of this course. We're obviously, we're running a six minute time limit through this course, and uh, six minutes is a tough time limit to get through any difficult course, but particularly through a course that has so many obstacles on top of the actual gates themselves. And that was gate 10, and now we're taking a look at the one, the only, Jinja Ninja RC, otherwise known as Cameron. Cameron is a particularly capable driver. He has spent a lot of hours behind the wheel or the controller, and he knows his trucks very well. He's both a both an incredible tuner and an incredible driver and it shows during every competition. So let's see how Cameron handles this course two for class two and uh, if it if it gives him a run for his money and then we'll take a look at my run to see some, well, some not so savory results, shall we say. Headed through gate number one, really not too much of an issue. The hard part about gate number one is the way that it sets you up for gate number two. Again, you kind of have to do this weird little bob and weave through the rock field to get to gate number two. And you can see even after doing the bob and weave, Cameron doesn't like his lineup, so he decides to abandon, do a little loop around in one of the very few open spots that are available to do loops, and then head back up. And I think that was the right call. Most of the people that I saw having an easy time with this gate just entered it from that passenger side like we saw Cameron do there, and that really wasn't too much trouble whatsoever. The people that didn't see that line coming in from the passenger side and tried to hit it from down low, they ended up struggling a bit more, although I did even see a few trucks make it up that steep incline without too much trouble, so I don't think that gate number one or gate number two were really too difficult for this course. The difficulty obviously starts here 
here with gate number three. You can see Cameron already tapping that gate, and that is definitely not what we expect from Cameron's runs early on. We definitely don't expect to see him tap a gate this early. We also just typically don't expect to see Cameron tap gates at all, but that was a tough little V-notch, and you can see he just wasn't quite taking enough time through it. He was leaning over to that passenger side, and he just kind of committed to it, and unfortunately, that cost him that gate. Now, this one here, I wish that I would have gotten an angle from above on this run, but you'll see it in the next. There is a giant, giant chasm that Cameron is trying to avoid. You will see it here for just a moment in between these three rocks. And really, that's what makes gate number four so difficult. It wasn't necessarily the entry to the gate itself. In fact, that was relatively easy. It did have a bit of a breakover angle, so you wanted to make sure that you were paying attention to that and angling your skid as you came into it. But the difficult part about gate four was definitely that exit and just trying to avoid that chasm. Cameron did a great job of it. Even though he had to take a backup, it was absolutely worth it, and he committed to the backup early enough that it wasn't a problem. I saw too many people get their entire front end into that chasm and then try to reverse out. And if you've ever been in that situation, whether or not you're in a comp, you know that trying to reverse out when your front end is sucked down into a massive hole is not a good situation. You will not have a good time trying to get out of there. Your back end is going to be able to do whatever it wants at that point. You're not going to have any control over your steering and it just leads to bad outcomes. Luckily, Cameron didn't have any trouble with that early reverse and he was able to completely avoid that chasm. Flip around, hit five, which was that pretty uh, mellow but still interesting side hill that he had to take a reverse for. Unfortunately, I saw most of the competitors that went through there had to take a reverse through there, and uh, that was not surprising. He made a quick, uh, quick little jaunt over to gate number six, which wasn't too difficult for him whatsoever. Uh, another little V-notchy type of situation where you just had to take your time and make sure that you were lined up square to it. And then he heads over to that bonus that we just saw. That one, really, again, not too difficult of a bonus, although you can see there was, again, another trick line. Luke uh, or Scumbag RC, the setter of this course, did a really good job of setting these gates in such a way where it wasn't super obvious what the best line was, and there were several potential lines for each gate. Now, obviously not for this particular gate. This V-notch was pretty straightforward, but you can see even on this gate, Cameron saw that he was not squared up to it. He took that reverse, took the time, and squared himself perfect, perfectly up to it, and it paid off. I saw a lot of competitors have trouble with that gate because they committed to not being squared up to it. Once you committed to that gate and got into it, if you ended up sliding off on either of your front tires, you were in for a ride and you were probably going to have to take a reposition. Now this second bonus here, this one was also quite a doozy. You can see Cameron very gingerly approaching it and really the difficult part about it is that you have to hang your passenger tire off of this ledge to be able to clear that cone on his driver's side that you can just barely see through his window there, but uh, it, it doesn't give you the traction necessary. You can see it just butts your rear axle up against that ledge, and you really have to work it and try to find the right area to get up and over. Luckily, Cameron gets a good bounce there, and it does square him up to it in the correct way. That's exactly how we want to see that gate run. Getting in the way of the competitor there, get out of the way, Alec, and into gate number eight here. Now, this gate here, again, another kind of hang up, uh, another one where you're, you're hanging tire and you kind of just have to work it. Again, luckily, Cameron has no troubles there. It bounces him in a very nice fashion, and he's able to get through there. Now, I've highlighted this time in red because you can see uh, he only has now 15 seconds left. He just made really, really quick time of that gate number 9, really more of a way to get to gate number 10, and uh, now he's working on gate number 10. Unfortunately, he didn't have a great plan set up for gate number 10, so he ends up DNFing here right before getting through the gate. Really unfortunate, but ending up with a plus 11 still a fantastic score on this course now i do want to say thank you to west desert wheeler or logan i'll leave a link to his channel down in the description for filming my run i am still nowhere near capable enough of a driver to film my own runs uh, if i want to have a solid outcome for the run so when i do want to try to be competitive i tend to hand the camera over to logan and i really appreciate him taking the time to help me out with uh, with my recording so 
making the same approach here as Cameron did through gate number one and not having too much trouble through there. I know a lot of people did approach that gate from the right hand side, not taking that left hand approach and they ended up having trouble with it. I saw enough competitors go through this course that I wasn't too worried about my approach to that one. I know that I, I knew that I would have a relatively easy time with it. Same thing here. I'm going to take the same approach that Cameron did going high on the passenger side, coming through and just watching my rear end, essentially trying to make sure that I don't have any troubles as I bring it through since we are sticking close to that passenger side. Going to avoid that bonus for now. Come back around and hit it after gate seven is my plan. Uh, same thing that Cameron did. You know, once you set out with a plan, you really want to try to stick with it if you can. Now, obviously, you're going to have to adapt the plan at, at certain points, right? There are going to be times where there's just no way around it. You're going to have to change your plan. But if you have a plan for the way to approach a course and it's working out for you, stick with it and uh, and remember what you decided to do. It typically takes a bit of stress off of you to have that plan coordinated beforehand and then you're just focused on your driving. Now, unfortunately, I did not have a plan for this gate. Once I got about halfway through it, like I was mentioning in Cameron's run as he was passing through gate number seven, I mentioned that a lot of people committed once they slid off and they got themselves in a pickle. Well, that was exactly what I did here on gate number three. Super unfortunate and you can see just how wedged in there I ended up without really without too much effort. Uh, luckily with this reposition, uh, I am allowed to kind of fix my body here without taking a repair. So I'm going to do my best to work on fixing seen that body these magnet mounts are not treating me well and i know i know i keep saying that you're not going to see the truck with magnet mounts on the channel again but yes yes here it is i've heard it everyone has given me shit for running magnet mounts still i need to fix it i need to put body posts on and it will happen before the finals but i wasn't being super competitive this season anyways and i have been so absolutely slammed with other stuff that i just haven't had time for it so i do apologize and uh well I, maybe i shouldn't apologize because it's just more entertainment for you guys you get to enjoy it you can see here i'm starting to get sucked into that gate number four and so i take that reverse unfortunately i'm so focused on the reverse there that i'm not focused on where the gate is and i end up reversing straight into the gate so now this is really the the dumpster fire starting we can see the the incineration is really the, the flames are starting to lick out of the out of the lid of the dumpster and uh, we're really everything's really catching on fire now uh, <laughs> we're just making all the mistakes that we possibly can uh, and just to top it off we'll make another one there we'll uh, we'll slide down I should have given it a little bit more beans and I don't know why I didn't even think about it now I'm down here futzing around trying to find the line back up sliding down off of the rock even further having to take it even further down and take a loop and I know that this course is tight on time so now I'm really stressing myself out and through stressing myself out I'm not looking at the approach to this breakover angle here uh, very closely I certainly didn't think that there was going to be a problem for me but it absolutely was so I, I work it I work it I work it it finally breaks free but as it breaks free it forces me further to the driver's side because I'm giving it too much throttle as I go through and then I have to take another reverse so dumpster fire dumpster fire dumpster fire but hey we're sticking in there we're gonna try our very best to make it happen I decide to skip the bonus that I skipped initially that lower bonus because I know I've burned so much time getting through these other gates that I really just need to try to make it to the end DNF gates are worth 15 points versus just hitting a gate is worth 10 so it's definitely imperative that you make it through as many gates as you possibly, as you possibly, possibly can. Um, setting up here for gate number seven, getting real close to that driver's side tire. Uh, you can see I kind of did the same thing that I did on gate three, committing to a bit of an off camber approach, but I figured I could get through it if I just pushed it a little bit and I was right on that one. So glad I did that because it definitely saved me time and saved me a reverse, which if you noticed right before I hit gate number seven, I burned a reverse already just doing a stupid loop around, not giving it enough of a good throttle blip and uh, breaking track. So I end up having to take a reverse just to get off of that rock before gate seven. Now here we're going to head into the bonus, trying to get this bonus here so I can make up some of the points, but we're already at four minutes and 30 seconds. So I'm going to take one good approach. I already have it in my mind right now. I'm going to take one good approach to this gate, see if I can make it through. If I can't, I'm just going to move on. So that was my sign right there.
right there. I flip off of it. Dumpster fire continues. I have to take an upright here, trying to figure out my upright, and I just can't quite figure out how I'm gonna do it. And then Logan, duh, says to me, why don't you just flip it the other way? And that's what I did. So thank you, Logan. In my times of flustered driving, you were there for me, and I appreciate your spotting. Now, here's where things get a little bit, uh, well, that goes completely south. So, uh, you know, going a little bit too quickly up there, I have to take a reverse to cause my, or to stop myself from flipping, and everything, uh, ev everything, all the bad things happen all at once. But still got a smile on my face because holy crap, I'm kind of proud of myself for breaking my rig this hard. Let's take a look at the slow mo replay on this and see just what happens. So, here, a little bit hard to tell, but you can tell the wheel's already wobbling, and then the wheel actually goes, that, that driver's side wheel goes the opposite direction as I'm steering to the passenger side. You can see right here, wheel goes the opposite direction. Now I think what happened there is I actually broke the steering link and then I kept driving. And after, after breaking the steering link and keeping driving, that's what finished off the entire axle housing. So yep, don't floor it kids and uh, we still had a great day anyways. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is all I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this dumpster fire as much as I did. It was a blast. Even though I broke everything, I had a really good time. I hope that you enjoyed it just as much to see me break everything but still have a good time. Cameron, your run was actually still excellent. This course was really, really hard. I hope that you guys could see that. I hope it came through in this video, but I do appreciate you making it to the end of this video. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and give it a like. Subscribe to High Noon Hobby if you want to see more content like this every single week, and don't forget to submit your entry for the 3K subscriber giveaway on highnoonhobby.com forward slash 3k giveaway links down in the description directions are down in the description and then be there get it in before june 9th and then be there on june 11th for the live stream where we will announce the winners thank you all for joining me here i hope that you have a wonderful rest of your weekend enjoy some scale trailing maybe some hard lines maybe some fpv drone and maybe some saran and maybe some other stuff that i don't even know about leave it down in the comment section down below and if you have an idea for a video do the same and we will see you soon Cheers.